In glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, you will recall that 12 electron shuttles were produced, 10 NADH and 2 FADH2. We are about to find out why these loaded electron shuttles are so important. Look at the inner mitochondria membrane. What do you notice? There are clusters of proteins arranged along the inner mitochondria membrane. These clusters of proteins make up the electron transport chain. The proteins that make up the electron transport chain are very interesting. This image shows the structure of two of these proteins located close together. A small one shown in pink and a larger one shown in yellow. These proteins contain special molecules called heme groups. In the center of each heme group is an iron ion. These iron ions act a little like an electric wire that electrons can move along. Watch what happens when NADH arrives at the first protein in the electron transport chain. It drops off a very excited electron. The electron moves through the chain of proteins, jumping from one iron ion to the next in the chain. As it moves along, it releases energy. The second electron is dropped off and does the same. NAD now moves off into the matrix so it can be loaded with new electrons. It's time to prepare to model the final step in aerobic respiration, the electron transport chain. We need to zoom into the mitochondria so we can view more detail of the intermembrane space. You can now see that respiration poster C is focusing in on the intermembrane space where the electron transport chain is located. Let's get familiar with the parts of the respiration poster part C. Find the mitochondria matrix. This is shaded blue. Now, locate the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Next, locate the outer membrane of the mitochondria. The space between the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane is called the intermembrane space. There are three proteins clustered together on the inner membrane. This is the electron transport chain. There is an enzyme called ATP synthase embedded in the inner membrane. Now, follow the animation to place your model pieces in the correct position on your poster. Place your oxygen molecule in the oxygen box in the matrix. Place your ADP molecules in the ADP box in the matrix and arrange your inorganic phosphate molecules nearby. Put 10 protons in the intermembrane space and 20 protons in the matrix. And finally, place your loaded electron shuttles, NADH and FADH2, into the matrix. First, we will model how the flow of electrons through the electron transport chain generates an electrochemical gradient. NADH drops off its excited electrons at the first protein in the electron transport chain. The electrons start to flow through the proteins of the electron transport chain. As they do this, they supply energy to pump protons across the inner membrane into the intermembrane space. This energy helps the protons to keep moving into the intermembrane space even when it is getting crowded in there. The protons keep being pumped from an area of low concentration in the matrix to an area of high concentration in the intermembrane space. NAD moves off to pick up a new load of electrons from the Krebs cycle. Pause the video here so you can model this on your poster. FADH2 can also drop off excited electrons. You can see it drops them off at a slightly different place in the electron transport chain. It misses the first protein. As the electrons flow through the electron transport chain, more protons are pumped into the intermembrane space. FAD moves off to pick up a new load of electrons from the Krebs cycle. Pause the video here so you can model this on your poster. Can you see a problem starting to emerge at the end of the electron transport chain? The final protein in the chain is getting overcrowded with electrons. If they are not removed, 
then the flow of electrons through the chain gets jammed up. It's a little like blocking the end of a tunnel. If cars are blocking the end, then other cars can't move through the tunnel. We need a final electron acceptor, something that will remove the electrons away from this protein so the flow can keep happening. Can you guess what it is? It's oxygen. This is why we call it aerobic cellular respiration. In a quite dangerous reaction, oxygen picks up the electrons and some protons, and water is produced. Pause the video here so you can model this on your poster. Look at the buildup of protons in the intermembrane space. It's very crowded in there. The protons are looking for a way out. There is only one way out, through ATP synthase. As three protons move through ATP synthase, they cause part of this protein to spin, a little like a rotor spins. This supplies enough energy to join an inorganic phosphate group to ADP. For every three protons moving through ATP synthase, we get an ATP molecule produced. Pause the video here so you can model this on your poster. Let's return to the original equation for respiration and compare aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, we get 36 to 38 ATP. It's not a precise number. In anaerobic respiration, we get 2 ATP. That's a big difference you can start to see why we need to keep breathing. We need to keep getting oxygen to our cells so we can do aerobic cellular respiration and keep our cell factories running.